Good morning, everyone, and welcome to New Emmanuel Church. I hope everybody's having a blessed Sunday morning this morning. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of applause. Thank you. Thank you. If everybody that would and could please stand up, I will take us to prayer this morning. If everybody please bow your head. Father, we just come to you this morning, Lord, with just gratitude and praise from our hearts, Lord, just thanking you for everything that you're doing in this church, Lord, and in our lives. Lord, just thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love, and your faithfulness, Lord, that you just show us and continue to show us each and every day, Father. Just uh, be with us as we go through this service this morning, Lord. Just help everyone to open up their hearts and their minds so that they may receive everything that you have to offer, Lord. And just, Father, just please cover Mr. Brian Birchfield with all your blessings this morning as he brings us this beautiful word and uh, beautiful songs. Um, Lord, just help us all just to take it all in, Lord, and uh, we will give you the glory, the honor, and the praise, for it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Thank you, and you may be seated. And if everybody would please flip to the back of your bulletins this morning, we would like to wish happy birthdays to Michelle, Joey Brown, Alexa, Madeline, and others in September. Tomorrow, September 2nd, is Labor Day, and I hope that everybody has a joyful holiday, relaxing holiday, and um, just end of the summer start of the fall so let's just thank god for that thank god for cooler weather coming amen uh september 4th wednesday night bible study with mr kenny will be at 7 30. um i know he's starting a new book i believe it's in hebrews this time so um it'll be a great time if everybody could that would please join or if not just listen online it's a great time And then October 26th is Fall into the 80s Fall Festival at 4 p.m. That's going to be a great time. We'll need lots of help that day setting up, taking down. So just be in prayer for that. And um, we would like to wish special guest Mr. Brian Birchfield this morning. Everybody give him a hand clap of applause. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, just everybody, please take the bulletin home. Pray for everybody on this bulletin. Names uh, list just keeps growing and growing. But uh, just uh, pray for everybody. And with that, if Miss Colleen would come up, we would like to give her a encouragement cl- hand clap this morning as she comes up to do devotion. Good morning, church. Praise God. All right, so it's my good week. So I'm here. <laughs> it's, y'all bear with me. Give me one second, y'all, just one moment. The Lord says that we can come boldly before his throne of grace. So, Father, I come boldly before your throne of grace, God, with thanksgiving and praise all to you. I glorify you. I magnify you. I honor you, God, for seeing me through all of this my sister and I just thank you Lord God thank you for everything Lord I just I praise your holy name Lord I love you thank you sir (laughs) I get weak easy well I want to do devotion obviously because it's my good week but it's also my last chemo treatment. God did it because I could not have done it without him. And I promise you, I am glowing differently now with God. It is a God thing that I have made it. 
because there has been many times I said, God, just, I can't do this. I don't want to do this. And I need to be healed right now or I just need to go home to you. Because this has been the hardest thing so far that I've been through. You lose a piece of yourself. You can't be the mother you want to be. You can't be the wife. You can't be the friend, the cousin, the niece. You can't be anything. And when your sister is diagnosed a week before you and you have to go through this together and then your husband the month before you with a rare blood cancer, it's just, it's a lot. It's a lot. My God. God. He is still on the throne. And I'm so glad that he is preparing a place for all of us. And I can't wait. I can't wait. But my devotion today, I started off with scriptures, you know, that have helped me through my chemo. I was like, let me read some scriptures. You can never go wrong with scriptures. And then, of course, the Lord leads me to other things, and I find other things. But let me start here. Um, God... God's word makes it perfectly clear <clears throat> that it's God's will that we are well, healthy, and whole. The same blood that Jesus shed on Calvary's tree for our redemption was also shed that we might be free from sickness and disease. Jesus bore our sickness and carried our disease. In Matthew 8, 17, it tells us that. He did that for us so that we don't have to carry it. Healing is God's promise to us. However, just because it's God's will in our life doesn't mean that it automatically just happens. We have to believe in His promises. We have to reach out for them in faith, and we have to claim them for ourselves. Everything we receive from God, we receive by our faith. A key factor in releasing your faith is the word that comes out of your mouth. There is power released in our life when the spirit, when, when, we, when you speak God's word. A vital part of adopting God's promises and activating spiritual forces that will bring God's promises to be displayed. Proverbs 18 and 21, it says that the tongue has the power of life and death. And those who love it will eat of its fruit. And I had to be reminded of that. Because I've called my mama many times, not being able to make it through it. And just wanting to lay down and die. But I've got to remember that I've got to keep my mind right. And what I speak, the enemy will hear. And he'll use it against me and he'll bring me down if I let him. And I can't let him and I won't let him. And I'm not gonna let him. Give me just a moment, I'm sorry. There is a, when Michael was diagnosed, um, I have a prayer that I prayed for him daily. And then of course, I started to have to add myself to it. But the prayer, it says, by the authority that God's given me in the name of Jesus Christ, I command every platelet, every cell, every cancer cell, every molecule, the marrow, the marrow, every organ, every part of our body to fall in line, operate and perform in perfection the way that God created and made it to work and perform in Jesus' name. And I pray that for Michael and I every day because God is the only one that's going to do this I know that I still have I won't be completely done with treatment until next year around May and then of course Michael's is a lifelong thing but God 
my God. Scriptures that have helped me through this. Psalms 1 and 12 and 7, it says, They will have no fear of bad news. Their hearts are steadfast and trusting in the Lord. And I hold on to that one. I hold on to that one very tightly. And my favorite, uh, Nahum, Nahum, I don't know how to pronounce it, um, 1 and 9, <clears throat> it says that he will make an utter end and affliction shall never rise up again a second time. Because with the cancer I have, it can come back. It can spread. Many different types of cancers can. But I am really holding on to the fact that the Lord's word says that affliction will not rise up a second time. And I am claiming that. Because there's lots of times that I have thought that my best days are behind me. But Ecclesiastes 7 and 10 says, <laughs> Do not say, why were the old days better than these? For it's not wise to ask such questions. Okay, Lord, I heard you. It also tells us in Matthew 6, 3 and 4, do not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow can worry about itself. You know, the Lord takes care of all his children and even the animals. The other day I was walking out of a store and I noticed these little birds. You know how it's been hot and our cars drip water on the ground? And I noticed these little birds just sipping up the water from where a parking lot was. And I was like, God, you do take care of them. You're going to take care of me. His beauty is everywhere. I just got to look for it. Sometimes I feel like this year's just been taken away from me. Because it started in, well, it started in February with Michael, January with Michael, and then April with Valana and I, and I just feel like, I mean, here I am in September, and I don't even know how I've gotten to September, but the Lord's word in Joel 2 and 25 says, I'll repay you for the years that the locusts have eaten. Study to show thyself approved, y'all. Read your Bible. Find the words that you need when you need them. <laughs> because they help encourage and just strengthen us. They are our strength. <sighs> One of my other favorite ones is James 1, 2, and 3. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kind, because you know the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Yes. Yes. Perseverance is doing something despite the difficulty. So keep on keeping on. My mother-in-law, right before she passed, I asked her, she passed from ovarian cancer, I asked her what scripture she was holding on to. And her scripture was Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. And all your ways submit to Him and He will make your path straight. And you know, let me tell you a funny story. I told mom this the other day. My husband is a blue collar man, so he works construction sites. And of course, you know, that's where the porta potties are because you can't use the houses. We're going down the road the other day, and he says, What does Proverbs 3 5 and 6 say, Colleen? I looked at him and I said, are you kidding me? 
I said, because I had shirts made. We did family pictures with his mom. Like, I'm like, are you kidding me? You don't know what it says? I said, that's your mama's scripture. I said, and then I, you know, quoted it to him. And he said that every porter potty he walks in, that scripture is listed on the porta potty. I said, thank you, Lord. Small reminders. <laughs> God is good. God has a sense of humor. And God has a way of speaking to our hearts. Oh, Lord, I love you so much. In Isaiah 43 and 2, when thou passest through the waters, I will be there with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when you walkest through the fire, they shall not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. I think about Michael, Valana, and me. And I think about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And I think of us in that fire, but that fourth man. That fourth man is in there with us, and we're going to walk out of this unscathed in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your word. It just, it just, God, it calms the soul, the spirit, and it just speaks to us so much. And I, I, I want to read a poem. And then I have two more scriptures. <laughs> um, and my eyes twitch, so, and this is really little, so y'all bear with me. <clears throat> but I found this poem, and it kind of just resonated with me and just going through chemo. So I just wanted to read it. Um, it's called Holes. I don't know if anyone's ever heard it. <clears throat> but it's by a man named Scott Lewis and the elders from his mission. <clears throat> Sorry, y'all. I have been in that hole for a very long time. In the dark and in the damp, in the cold and in the slime. The shaft was above me and I could see quite clear but there was no way I could reach it from here. Nor could I remember the world way up there, so I lost all my hope and I gave into despair. I knew nothing but the darkness, the floor and the walls. <laughs> then turned off in a distance, then off in a distance, I heard someone call. Get up, get up. There's nothing the matter. Take rocks and old sticks and build up a fine ladder. This had never occurred to me. It never crossed my mind, but I started to stack all the stones that I could find. When I ran out of stones, then old sticks were my goal. For one way or another, I was getting out of this hole. So I soon had a ladder that was sturdy and tall, and I thought, I'll soon leave this place once and for all. I climbed up the ladder. It was no easy chore. From the lifting of the boulders, my shoulders were sore. I climbed up the ladder, it, but it had stopped, but the, it had soon had, I'm sorry, y'all but soon had to stop for my ladder stopped short some 10 feet to the top. I climbed back down my ladder and started to cry. I'd done all that I could do. Lord, Lord help me. I gave it my best try. And in spite of my work in the hole, I guess I must die. And all I could do was just sit there and think, why? Was my ladder too short? Was my hole much too deep? 
Then way from upon high came a voice, do not weep. And then faith, hope, and love entered into my chest. And the voice said to me that I had done my best. He said, you worked very hard and you've labored. And I know the labor's been rough, but the ladder you built is at least tall enough. Do not despair. You have reason to hope. Just climb up that ladder and I'll throw you down a rope. I climbed up the ladder and then climbed up the cord. And when I got to the top, there stood the Lord. I couldn't be happier. My struggle was done. I blinked in the brightness that came from the sun. I fell to the ground. His feet did I kiss. I cried. What can I do to repay thee for this? Then he looked all ab- then he looked all about him. There were holes all in the ground. They had people inside. They were seen all around. There were thousands of holes that were there, damp, dark and deep, and the Lord turned to me and said, "Feed my sheep." Then he went on his way to help other lost souls. And I got right to work, calling down to those holes. Get up, get up. There's nothing the matter. Take rocks and old sticks and build up a fine ladder. It now was my turn to spread the good word, the most glorious message that man had ever heard. Then there was one who was willing to save one and all. And we've got to be ready when he gives us the call. He pulled us out of the hole that we're in and he saved our souls from death and from sin. So do not lose faith. There is a reason to hope. Just build up your ladder and he'll throw down his rope. You know, there's people everywhere suffering. One thing I've noticed, because I've had a lot of time to just sit, is see things that pop up on Facebook of all the hurt and the pain and the people going through things. Y'all forgive me. I can't see or... I've got, let me read these scriptures real quick. Thessalonians 5 and 11. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, just as in fact as you are doing. We have to build each other up. We can't just look in that hole and be like, ah, oh, they're okay. They'll make it. No. We have to help them. 1 Samuel 16 and 7, But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at things that people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. And I am so glad that he sees my heart and knows my heart. And I hope y'all got something from this Um, just remember me in prayer Thursday my last chemo (laughs) oh God did it God did it
Let's just all stand and go to the Lord in prayer. For some of you that don't know, this is my daughter, and she's going through breast cancer. This is her good week. She gets one week out of the month, and she gets to do devotion. And she done a really good job. So, y'all just yes, give her give her a hand. Thank you, Jesus. We're gonna we're gonna pray, and then the praise team's gonna come up. And they're gonna do just a couple of songs before we give the microphone to uh, Brother Brian this morning. Father, we just come before you once again. Oh, we are so thankful, God, for what you're doing, Lord. We know that you are working all things out for our good because your word says that all things work together for good to them that love the Lord who are the called according to your purpose. And Father, we know that we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise, Lord. And we know when we do that, God, that you're working all things, no matter what it looks like, Lord. You're working all things out. And we thank, we are thankful today, God, that she's at the end of this chemo part, Father God. And we know that you're going to be with her the rest of the way, Father God, and we praise you for that, Lord. We lift her up today. We lift Valana up. We lift Michael up, Lord, today before you, God. You know what they're going through. And so, Father, wrap a blanket of love around them all, Father God. In the name of Jesus, be with them, Lord. Guide them. Direct them. Give them a word, Lord, like you have already, Lord. Give them another word every day, God, that they wake up, Father. Lord, I pray for the service today, Lord, that you would touch each and every one that's here, Father. Have your will in your way, Lord. Speak to hearts, Lord. Speak to their, their, the soul, deep down in the soul today, Father. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we love you. We love you. We love you. We love you, Lord. And there is none, there is none like you. In all the heavens and in all the earth, Lord, there is none like you. And you are great and mighty, Lord. Oh, and we thank you, Father God, for all that you're doing. Have your will in your way, Lord, as we prepare to, to worship you, to praise you, Father God, to give you praise, to give you glory and honor, Lord, because you've done so much for us, Lord. You've done so much for this family, Lord. You've done so much, Lord, that we can't even, we can't even stop and, and, and say how much because it would take us years, Lord, years to tell you how good you are. And, Lord, one day... One day we're going to be able to do that when we see you face to face. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for your many blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Come on, praise team. Let's praise the Lord this morning. <laughs> 